Think. Act. And prosper. You are now tuned in to the Money Level Show. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Money Level Show, where we think, act, and prosper. This video today is brought to you by the Rule Symposium. So Rick Rule is putting on his annual symposium. This is the 20th year that he has held this. Rick Rule is a legendary natural resource investor. I've had him on my channel a couple of times. And so he is going to have some of the most important keynote speakers come out to the symposium, such as Danielle DiMartino Booth, Jim Rickards, and many other CEOs and brilliant minds in this space of natural resource investing. And so click the link in the description below to be taken where you can actually sign up for this event. This event does cost money, but the value that you are receiving is actually a lot more than what you were paying out. Rick Rule Symposium is coming up from July 26th through the 29th and you can attend via live or you can attend via in person. And so be sure to click the link in the bio and check that out. All right, so today we're gonna talk about inflation. We're going to talk about Joe Biden recently had a meeting with Fed Chair Jerome Powell and they talked about inflation and the importance of fighting inflation. Now, there has been a lot of speculation on saying that the Fed cannot fight inflation. Inflation is going to win, which ultimately I believe that is going to happen. I believe that our debt to GDP is too high and eventually they are going to have to back off and let inflation run hot to inflate away a lot of the debt that we have accumulated over the years because of low interest rates. Right. So low interest rates means that you borrow more. That means that you obtain more debt. So Joe Biden met with Jerome Powell and he talked about uh, being able to fight inflation and how they're going to fight inflation and how he is going to let the Fed actually operate independently. So let's go ahead and dive into this article. This article is from Forbes. It says Biden meets with Fed Chair Powell saying fighting inflation is a top economic priority. President Joe Biden met with Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell at the White House on Tuesday to discuss tackling historically high levels of inflation, declaring it a top priority for the administration, while also reassuring the public that the economy remains strong. Now, this is where the discrepancy is, is if the economy is actually strong. We have a lot of unemployment. We have a lot of things going on in the economy. Liquidity is drying up. People are borrowing at higher interest rates. People are borrowing on their credit cards a lot. So we're seeing a lot of that debt climb up. And so a lot of people say that the economy isn't strong because especially because of supply chains and all these different things, we have a lot of different factors that say the opposite. Right. And so at this meeting, President Joe Biden and Fed Chair Jerome Powell signaled the growing urgency needed to fight inflation, which remains at 40 year highs and has led to rising recession fears among investors who have been battered by brutal market sell off this year. The president reiterated on Tuesday that while bringing down inflation is a paramount concern, he will provide the central bank with the independence it needs to tackle inflation. The Biden administration remains committed to fighting inflation, which is a global challenge as evidenced by the dismal Eurozone inflation report earlier today, but it's not going to interfere with the Fed's work. All right, so Biden is saying that he is not going to interfere with the Fed's work. He's gonna let the Fed do their thing and the Fed is going to try their best to fight inflation. Now, whether they win or not, that remains to be seen. I believe that we have a lot more debt in our system, a lot more debt in corporate households, as well as the government um, than we had in the 1980s when they fought inflation. So it, it remains to be seen. All right. So the Fed recently raised rates uh, by a half percentage point. Uh, this was the biggest hike in two decades. So the rate move was the largest move since 2000 and, and is in response to burgeoning, burgeoning, however you say that, inflation pressures, right? And I found this recent article. This is, very, this is a very good article. It says a tale of two bubbles, how the Fed crashed the tech and the housing markets. And this was written by Luca Nikolic. Uh, in 2019, he says, since its founding, the Federal Reserve has had a hand in creating some of the largest bubbles in history. When the bank lowers interest rates, there's excess cash in the economy, making it 
Making it relatively cheap for anyone to borrow, this creates malinvestment in the economy because while not everyone has profitable ideas, many more people can borrow, causing a bubble to form. Once the economy is deemed to be overheating, the bank raised interest rates. This forces the bubble to burst and an economic downturn follows as a great deal of the malinvestment goes bust and people cannot borrow as cheaply anymore. To foster recovery, the Fed lowers rates again to boost investment, causing the entire cycle to repeat. This is precisely what occurred when a technology bubble burst in 2001 followed by the housing bubble in 2008. In fact, these two events are very closely tied together, which becomes evident through analysis of the monetary policies of that period. It was precisely the response to the 2001 crash that fostered the housing bubble in the first place. All right, so we have some economic turmoil here when the Fed cut rates from uh, way up here to down here in this area so rates were about 10 percent people were getting a lot of money on their savings and loans and their cds and all of that and then they cut rates uh down here and then they raised rates again uh so as you can see throughout the late 90s um you had a big rise in rates here uh this is where i believe the article is talking about i mean since the fed uh raised rates recently this was the biggest rate hike since this period here and so um, as you can see, this is in 99 to 2000 in the 2000 um, era. So you had July 2000 right here when they peaked. And then you see that the Fed cut rates again and they had to cut rates in response to the dot com bubble bursting. And so we're going to talk a little bit more about that as well. And so what this article was saying is that the Fed cut rates, which led to the housing bubble forming from about 2005 or 2000, I think it was around 2004 to about 2008. And so the Fed began raising rates again around this time, over this time period. And then they had to cut rates again at the, the beginning of 08 when the housing bubble started to pop. And then we saw, um, you know, the global financial crisis followed thereafter. So uh, it talks about how the Fed raising rates and such, how it can form the next bubble when they low lower interest rates. And that is arguably, I mean, something we could say, you know, for 2020. I mean, stock market took a huge, huge dump. And then we saw the Fed come in and cut rates. And then we saw a huge bubble. And now they are raising rates and that bubble looks to be bursting. You know, a lot of these stocks are off their highs. So this part says the technology bubble bursts. The Nasdaq rose at an alarming pace, reaching almost 2,200 points in January of 1999. In order to stop the economy from overheating, the federal funds rate was raised six times between June of 1999 and May of 2000. Unfortunately, despite attempts to cool down the economy, such a stock market frenzy on the Nasdaq had already left an economic mark it collapsed at the turn of the millennium and was followed by a mild recession the nasdaq fell from three thousand nine hundred sixty six dollars in june of 2000 to two thousand four hundred seventy one dollars in december of the same year by september of 2001 the following year it was down to 1498 so as you can see the dates right here so the fed was Inter raise interest rates six times in between June of 1999 and May of 2000. So this is around a year time frame. They raised rates six times. And then the NASDAQ actually fell in June of 2000. So they stopped in May of 2000. The NASDAQ fell in June of 2000. And then by December, it fell even more. And then by 2001, it fell even more. And so this is very similar to what we're seeing today. And so I'm being more protective and it actually woke me up to like, okay, well, I need to have more cash. I need to have more cash, more liquidity on hand because this does not look good. And so the Fed has already raised rates uh, twice this year and they're looking at raising rates again in June and July uh, by 50 basis points. So that's four times already in less than a year. Uh, so 
we could see these stocks go down even further. And I talked about bear market rallies. I talked about, you know, how those work and how we see that these temporary rises in, in equities when there's a bear market rally, but ultimately it heads down. And, and so be sure to hit the like button on this video. Drop a comment. What are you doing to protect yourself? How are you going to protect yourself from not being wiped out? And be sure to engage in the comments. I love to engage with you all. So be sure to do that. Be sure to subscribe. I hope that this video was helpful for you all. Y'all stay blessed. Y'all have a good day. Peace.